Pinky Tails, Sky Blue, and the Seven Colors. I bet you'll love tonight's story, Pounded Pumpkin. It's all about bright, happy colors, honest furniture, and accurate statistics. Shall we get started? Once upon a time, there was a faraway kingdom ruled by a loving king and his queen. One day, the queen looked up at the sky after a terrible storm had passed, and she smiled. She was enthralled by the bright blue hue set against the newly formed rainbow that streaked across the horizon. From that moment on, all she desired was a daughter with a coat as blue as the sky and mane and tail as colorful as the rainbow. Months later, her wish came true and she named the little princess Sky Blue. Unfortunately, soon after the princess's birth, the queen took ill and passed away, leaving a grieving king and kingdom behind. Years passed, and the filly princess grew to be a headstrong, adventurous spirit beloved by her father and her ponies. The king, however, was very lonely and desired to find a new wife and mother for his daughter. To his misfortune, the mare he had chosen to make his queen was a cruel, heartless mare, with thoughts only of herself. Hang on just a darn minute! I'm a what now? An evil stepmother! Ooh, and a queen! Think one day I'll ever get used to your decision-making process? Probably not. I figured, but hang on, I'm supposed to be evil? Who said this queen mare character has to be evil? Uh, the plot? Duh! Can't have a story without a bad guy! Besides, you've been one before! You can totally do this! That was a mite different! I was a wolf and all I wanted was a basket full of apple treats! What does this queen want? Why don't you ask your magic mirror? My magic what now? As a wedding present to his new bride, the king gave the queen a rare magical mirror that was hung in her chambers. A mirror? Hmm. Huh. Not really my thing. I wonder who Rarity is in this here tale. Maybe she'd want it. Suddenly, the image on the mirror began to fill with pink clouds of magic. A floating purple pony head appeared eye-level to the queen, with a smile on its face. There are exactly 432 rarities in your kingdom, my queen. I will now tell you their exact location in alphabetical order. Hang on, Twa? Is that you? I am a magic mirror. I have infinite magical knowledge, and it's yours for the asking. Oh, that's right. The fairest of them all, shtick. Well, you ain't gonna get that neither, Pinky. I'll use this here mirror for good. Check on my kingdom and the ponies and the like. Heck, I could probably solve problems before they even start with this here magic. Ugh, AJ, that's not the point of the story. Better cast some pony else then, huh? Get it? You're trying to make me change your role in the story! <laughs> That's super clever, AJ, but not clever enough! Let's see how you fare when I do this! What? What are you doing? Where's all this arty stuff coming from? These are a reflection of Princess Sky Blue's accomplishments, my queen. She has become very popular amongst her kingdom. She's bested every night, slain many monsters. I get it, I get it. But, uh... What do the ponies think of the queen? They don't think she's evil, do they? Evil? Certainly not. They view her as being strong, confident, and honest. Their affection for you knows no bounds. Good. The Binky's trick didn't... Ugh. Wait! Ugh. I think I'm getting time skip sick. Magic mirror. The opinions of the ponies haven't changed, have they? Sky Blue is beloved above all others. Strong, smart, brave, loyal, and true. They would do anything to please her. Uh, and the queen? Her ruling has not changed, though she's often overlooked. Cast in the shadow of her stepdaughter, she's become a background pony in comparison. Say what now? <laughs> all right! You made your point, Piggy! I can't take it anymore! Stop! How, how many months has it been? I, I can't remember. Wait, I think, I think I was supposed to do something. Something to do with, with Sky Blue. 
She's everywhere, everywhere I look. Blue, blue, blue. But she ain't the queen. I am. Hey, Mayor. Yes, Your Majesty. I'm still queen, right? Of course, Your Majesty. Good. Good. And the ponies still like me, right? Uh... Mayor? The ponies have forgotten you even existed. Locked away in this chamber for months on end. Unmoving and staring with vacant eyes at me. Like the king, they assumed you were dead. Their love and adoration goes to Sky Blue, the only ruler they love. What? Sky Blue? She's a showboating, boasting bunch of feathers! She wouldn't know the first thing about running a kingdom! I've got to get rid of her somehow. That's the only way things will get back on track again! Yes. <laughs> yes! When she's gone, everything will make sense again! If you say so. Let's see now. I could banish her, but then she'd just come right back again. No, 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 no. I have to do something a little bit more permanent for the good of the kingdom. But I'm a queen. I can't just be luring away into the woods bringing my shovel. Uh, that might look mighty suspicious. No, no, no. I need some pony else to do the deed for me. But where would I find a pony like that? I might have the solution, Your Majesty. The mirror said. Its image shifted and displayed a blue unicorn sitting on the side of the road, desperately trying to force a rabbit inside a magician's hat to no avail. Ha! She's perfect! I'll send the guards at once to bring her to me! And while they're at it, they can pick some apples! Oh boy, I have a hankering for apples! It's like I haven't eaten in months! Apples for every pony! That's how I'll win their love back! <laughs> apples! It's genius! Pinky, I think you took it a little too far. Um, yeah... <laughs> Oops. Uh, but she'll be back to normal soon, right? Boy almighty! I love apples! <laughs> to the bad pinky corner, aren't you? Yep. Uh, the great and powerful Huntsmare at your service, your majesty, the Huntsmare said, strolling into the throne room in a burst of cheesy smoke effects. A Huntsmare, huh? Apples, what luck! You're used to hunting down little critters, so this shouldn't be too much trouble for y'all, Apples! Um, what's up with the Apples thing? I I'm not sure! I should have just cast some pony else. What if I broke her? I'm pretty sure at this point you did. Then I'll fix it. I- Oh, no you won't. You'll stay in that bird pinky corner as far away from the story as possible. In fact, I'll do you one better. I'm taking away your story editing privileges. What? Can you do that? Just did. What? Critters? I hunt for talent, not critters. Listen here, Apples. I've got a proposition for you. If I give you this here shovel, a man of apples and a potion, do you think you might be able to do your Apples Queen a little favor? A favor for what? Well, getting rid of that no good Apple Sky Blue, of course! Apples? What? But isn't she like your daughter? Step daughter! <laughs> Besides, I think the world might be better, safer, and more applier place if she just disappeared. Bring me back one of her feathers as proof that you've done the deed. Apples. And if you succeed, I'll make you the official magic act for every apples in the kingdom. But if you fail, well, this here is a tale for youngins. So I can't rightfully say, but it's to Apple's terrible to be spoken out loud. How am I supposed to use these things to... to... <sighs> I forget that you're a bit of a simple-minded Apple's mare. Hey! Just speaking the truth, little miss, since honesty and Apple's is all I am, I use this here map to take her 
of the forest away from any apple trails till you're good and lost. Use the shovel to do the deed. And hey, you can dig the apple's grave with it afterwards. Um... Then drink this here apple's potion that my mirror helped me make to transport yourself back here to the throne room with that feather. Now get! But how am I supposed to? I said get! Oh right, oh right, jeez. The great and powerful Huntsmare will think of something. The Huntsmare quickly left the castle to perform the Queen's nefarious deed, even though she didn't fully understand it. The Huntsmare wasted no time finding Sky Blue to complete her task. She lured her into the woods under the pretense that some pony needed saving, something she knew a decorated hero such as Sky Blue could never overlook. However, as the hours passed, Sky Blue became suspicious of the unicorn and prodded more information out of her. So, who did you say needed my help again? Oh, a little, uh, filly. Uh, she got lost in the woods and then trapped under a branch, which is why I brought the shovel, uh, you know, to dig her out. I thought you said it was a colt. Uh, no, no, it's definitely a filly. So why do you need me here? Why didn't you just conjure up a shovel with your magic and save her hours ago? Oh, well, uh, y you see... Oh, all right. It was all a lie. I'm actually just, uh, your biggest fan. Yeah, that's it. And I've lured you out here to uh, spend time with you and get your autograph. The Huntsmare said, offering Sky Blue her hat with a forced smile. Sky Blue cocked her head to the side in confusion. Huh. Clever. Never had a fan pull this before. Gotta give you props for creativity, I guess. Here. Sky Blue took the hat and plucked out one of her feathers to use as a quill. What's your name? Uh, Pony... Horse? Alrighty, there you go! Sky Blue said with a wink. Great! Oh, and I'm going to need that feather you just plucked. Uh, okay. And I'm gonna need you to stay in the forest and never ever come back again. Whoa, whoa, hold on! What? Before Sky Blue could finish her thought, the Huntsmare took the shovel and hit her over the head. Sky Blue immediately fell to the ground unconscious. Huh, that was easy. Who knew these things were so effective? Ugh, pony horse? What was I thinking? Now the great and powerful Huntsmare has to find a new hat. The Huntsmare said bitterly, before drinking from the potion vial that would teleport her back to the castle. Sometime later, Sky Blue groaned back into consciousness, putting a hoof to her head. I better get back before it gets too dark. Sky Blue took off from the ground and flew back over the paths she believed she had taken. However, the pounding headache she felt blurred her vision, and she swayed to and fro as she flew. Uh, that's the last time I follow a deranged fan into the... Sky Blue was cut short when she crashed head first into the side of a small cottage in the center of a clearing. The wall was thin and brittle. It crumbled around her as she landed hard on her right wing. She cried out in pain as the seven inhabitants of the cottage scurried over to see what had happened. Talk about breaking and entering! Great! Just great! She made me smell my dinner! Don't worry, Phillies! I bet she was just trying to come for a visit and doesn't know how to use a door. What? What? Who are all of you? And what is this stuff? Sky Blue asked, noting that the debris around didn't resemble a wall at all, but some kind of cookie instead. In fact, the whole house appeared to be made of candy and sweets. The cookie walls were held in place by frosting, pillars of candy cane provided the structure, and licorice lined all the windows. Even the little kitchen table was made of pretzel, and the seven seats beside it made of gumdrops. You're in a gingerbread house, silly! I got a great deal on it with the fairy tale realtor! Used to belong to a witch, but let me tell you, that witch sure could bake! Here, I'll help you up! Ooh, that wing doesn't look too good! Shrinky Pie, you're a doctor, right? What do you think? Shrinky Pie? Sky Blue asked, still a little dazed and confused. It was then she realized how strange the pony inhabitants looked. There were seven ponies in total, 
and each pony was a different bright color of the rainbow, with the exception of the pink pony who had initially helped her to her hooves. Other than by color, they were identical. My doctorate is in the field of psychiatry, but I'll take a look at it anyway. Shrinky Pie, the orange pony, said, approaching Sky Blue. Oh, uh, what? Ow! Yep, definitely broken. She'll have to stay here for a few weeks so it can heal. A few weeks? But I have to get back to the castle! <sighs> you live in a castle? They must have really comfy beds in a castle. You don't know who I am? Clumsy. Attractive? Friendly? I'm Princess Sky Blue! Ooh, nice to meet you, Princess! Did you hear that, Phillies? She's a real princess! Are we so lucky she broke our wall? Oh, <laughs> yeah, sorry about that. Don't be. Like I said, a witch used to live here and she put a spell on this place a long time ago. See? The wall is regenerating itself. If it didn't, we'd have been homeless by now. We can't seem to stop eating this place. <laughs> My name is Pinkie Pie, and this is Shrinky Pie. I prefer Doc, actually. It keeps it from getting too confusing around here. You look like you have some deep-seated problems. Maybe... mommy issues? This is Dinkie Pie! Isn't she so adorable? Oh, small like that! I am the same size as the rest of you! Ah! The red one, Dinkie Pie, said, enraged. Sky Blue noticed that compared to the others, she was indeed much smaller. And a really short temper! You can even say it's downright Dinky. Get it? <laughs> Moving right along, there's Stinky Pie. Nice to meet you. The green mare, Stinky, said holding out her hoof. A foul odor soon wafted over Sky Blue and her eyes teared up. She took a step back and laughed nervously, trying not to gag. <laughs> uh, uh, pleasure to meet you. Blinky Pie. <sighs> Is it time for bed yet? The blue-colored Blinky Pie said, blinking her eyes trying to force them to remain open. She's super sleepy all of the time. Then there's Winky Pie. It'll be nice to have such a brave, beautiful princess in the house. The purple one said, winking as she gave Sky Blue the once-over. She likes to wink at every pony for some reason, but she's really nice to them. Almost as nice as Gleeky Pie here. Gleeky? That's me, because I'm always just bursting over with glee. The yellow one said, Is that a word? No, not really, but I ran out of rhymes. So you're all sisters? Astute observation, but I'm afraid not. We're clones of pinkies. Isn't that just delightful? Delightful? How is being a defective clone delightful? Defective? Well, it's kind of a long story, but... There's this pony called Narrator, and she took away my fourth wall breaking powers before I could fix everything. So I went to the mirror pond to make a clone of myself, even though I promised Twilight I'd never do that again, to put in the bad pinky corner in my place so I could sneak into the story, fix everything, and sneak out without detection. But she messed up the incantation, didn't you, Pinky? All the pinkies came out a bit, uh, different. And to make matters worse, I can't remember what I'm supposed to do to fix things. I want my meta powers back. I just... What? Can we finish this conversation tomorrow? It's almost dark out. Time for sleep. Ooh, I call the bed next to the princess. Me too, me too. Stinky Pie added, jumping up and down and spreading her scent around the room. Sky Blue and the other Pinkies coughed and covered their noses. That's really nice and all, but, uh, is there maybe a bed alone somewhere? You can have the couch, as long as you dinky promise to not make a mess. What's a dinky promise? You don't want to know. Come with me, princess. I'll get you all banished up and ready for bed. Leaky said, taking Sky Blue's hoof in hers and pulling her along. I best assist. Only the practice hoof of a professional should set that bone. Now, about your mother. Howdy, Mirror! The queen said, awaking the magical mirror from its slumber. You look rather well, your majesty. I feel mighty better, it's true. 
Heck, it's only been one day without Sky Blue and all the twitching stopped. That's good. Point is, my brilliant plan was a success, but I'd figure I might as well just ask. So, Mare, who is Favorite Pony now? You may think she's gone now that she's out of your sight, but Princess Sky Blue is alive this night. Ponies will still love her so long as she draws breath. The only way to beat her is a swift, untimely death. She's alive? This can't be! That lying, thieving, hoodwink of a mare tricked me! Why didn't you tell me this before? And why didn't you ask for me to confirm whether she was successful or not? Well played, Mare. Well played. Fine. If y'all want something done right, you gotta do it yourself. As soon as I figure out what that is, got any ideas? Unfortunately, I do. As your magic mirror, I'm bound to help you, no matter how heinous the crime. You could perhaps use the spellbook? The mirror's image shifted away from the floating pony head and into a book of spells that she was able to retrieve from the mirror's surface. The book opened to a page entitled, Forever Sleep. The queen narrowed her eyes, glossing over the spell's effects and ingredients. Forever Sleep, huh? It's the worst thing we're allowed to do on a kid's show. We just need something to enchant. It can be an object or a food. Apples? Can it be apples? Let's poison some apples! <laughs> apples, apples, apples! Crap. So that's what sets off her crazy. I'll have to steer clear of that. How about a medal? Sky Blue is a decorated hero. She loves getting medals. The queen shook her head, blinking her eyes a few times to regain what little sanity remained. Yes! <clears throat> yes! <laughs> hey, it's perfect! Her pride will be her undoing, but I need a disguise to pull this off. The queen hurriedly flipped through the rest of the spellbook pages, gathering all the information she needed to pull off her wicked endeavor. The queen, with the assistance of her magic mirror, disguised herself as a light blue stallion with a dark blue mane. He was called Obligatory Love Interest, or Ollie for short. The queen knew he was a friend of Sky Blue's, some pony she had seen her race and joust with in her many spectacles. It didn't take her long to locate the candy cottage in the woods, and once Pinky and the clones left, she knocked briskly on the door. Moments later, Sky Blue answered it, sensing no danger. Finally! I found you! Ollie? What are you doing here? Every pony thinks you're on another adventurous crusade, but I was supposed to find you to give you this medal. You know, as a thank you for saving that orphanage with terminally ill foals from a combination fire and earthquake. Oh yeah! <laughs> that was weird, right? Sky Blue said with a chuckle. She clasped the medal around her neck and puffed out her chest proudly. Glad you found me! I was beginning to think... Wait, how did you know I was... Sky Blue started, but quickly collapsed on the ground deep in sleep. Ollie laughed, his voice changing into the deranged laughter of the queen. That changeling spell worked perfect! Now I'm rid of her for good! The queen declared before making a hasty exit. Later that evening, when Pinky and the clones returned, they were shocked and distraught to see the princess on the ground, unconscious. Well, most of them anyway. First, she breaks our wall. Then, she eats our food. Now she expects us to carry it up to bed? I don't think she's sleeping. <sighs> and I know something about sleeping. Should I give her mouth to mouth? Oh, cruel, cruel fate. Taking such a beautiful princess away from me while she was still in her prime. Wait, what's this? Pinky asked, picking up the medal around Sky Blue's neck. She probably won a medal for being the best looking sleeping princess. Tell that to Sleeping Beauty. Let me take a look. Hmm, nothing on the front except her cutie mark. But there's something written very small on the back. I'll have to take it off to see. Shrinky said, unclasping the medal. <gasps> Sky Blue immediately sat up and gasped, her chest heaving in panic in her eyes. Oh, Joy! You're right! I knew everything was going to turn out A-OK! -okay. What? What happened? We were about to ask you the same thing. The last thing I remember was Ollie, an old friend of mine, giving me that medal. Wait, so an old friend of 
friend of yours just happened to show up all the way out here with a medal, and that didn't look suspicious to you? Well, whoever or whatever he was, you probably shouldn't let any pony in the cottage while we're away. Maybe she should come with us. No, no, Stinky. You don't understand fairy tale logic yet. We have to mine rocks every day, even though we don't use them for anything, and leave a troubled princess alone where her evil stepmother queen can try to outsmart her and bring her harm. At least until I remember what it was I was supposed to do. Or maybe one of us can stay behind with her. I volunteer myself. Me too! Ah, uh, do I have to go over fairy tale logic again? Uh, I don't need any pony to watch over me! I can take care of myself just fine! <laughs> sure you can. The next day, Pinky and the clones left again for the mines, leaving Sky Blue behind. She promised them profusely not to open the door for any pony, but it wasn't too long before she heard a knock at the window. Oh, um, is any pony there? Who are you? What do you want? I, I, I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to disturb you. I, I'm just trying to raise money for my animal retreat. I, I won't bother you again. Wait, what are you selling? Oh. Um, well, I'm sort of a healer, and I heard that you had a broken wing. I have some enchanted bandages that will instantly heal it. All I ask for is three gold bits. Three bits? That's all? Ha! <laughs> what a deal! Sky Blue said, retrieving the coins from her saddlebag and exchanging them for the bandages. Here, let me help you with that. Wait, who told you I was injured? No pony except... Sky Blue started, then collapsed on the ground in slumber. Seriously? Dinky said, while she and the others examined the princess's body. No Medaya this time. <sighs> From what I observe, I believe these bandages are new. <gasps> Good idea, Doc! Pinky said, unraveling her injured wing. As before, Sky Blue gasped for breath and shot up from the ground in a haze. What happened this time? I thought I told you not to open the door! I didn't! I opened the window! It was a peddler! She said she could heal my wing with magic bandages! Are you kidding me?! Oh, my poor princess! Don't you worry, I'll tend to your every need. Does some pony need a hug? No, no! <laughs> it's okay, I'm fine. I won't open the door or the window to any pony ever again, I promise. The next day proceeded like normal. Against common sense, Pinky and the clones wandered away from their cottage without the princess to do menial work for no gain. Sky Blue had shut the doors and all the windows so she wouldn't be tempted a third time. A few hours went by with no sign of any intruders when there came a knock at the gingerbread wall. Hello? Who's there? Why, you don't sound like Pinky or her delightful clones. You know about them? Know about them? Goodness, I'm their neighbor. I'm the little old mare who lives in a shoe. I just crossed the pond over there. Every month I bring my basket of fruits and vegetables, and in exchange they give me a piece of their house to give to my many grandchildren. Fruits and vegetables, you say? Sky Blue said, her stomach growling with hunger. There's only so much sugary foods one pony can eat before getting herself sick. What kinds of fruits and vegetables? Oh, all sorts of things, really. Oh, why don't you break down this wall here and I can give this basket to you. I'll just take that piece home with me. Uh, something in me is telling me not to. Oh, that's just your common sense theory. Pay no mind to it now, you hear? Sky Blue did as the old mare had instructed, bucking down the gingerbread wall. Why, thank you, young filly. Here are the fruits and vegetables I promised, she said, handing over the basket. Sky Blue didn't waste a moment, accepting the gift and devouring produce left and right. Be sure to try the pears, they're mighty sweet. Oh, and don't forget the carrots, they have just the right amount of crunch. And you can't go wrong with apples. What did you say? I said apples can't go apples with apples. There's only one mare I know that talks like that. You're not an old mare at all. You're the queen. 
Sky blue choked on the last word, literally gasping for air as the piece of poison apple blocked her windpipe. She thrashed around in panic, crashing into the gingerbread house before landing on the ground in her forever slumber. Wait! I remember what I was supposed to do! I have to stop the queen before... Oh no! Applejack, how could you? She's your best friend! <laughs> Friends? How could I ever be friends with some pony more beloved than I? In fact, as I recall, you are a mite popular too. These here are called pinky tails, right? Well, I can't have that. Now that I'm evil and you're powerless, I'm just gonna have to take it all for myself. Apple tails, apples, apples, apples! The queen stalked closer to Pinky, who backed away in fear. Now, AJ, I, I was just trying to tell a story, you know? <laughs> you weren't supposed to be, uh, like, this. Pables? Pables? The queen taunted, getting closer and wielding a shovel from seemingly nowhere. Stop the story! This isn't how it goes! Please! You're gonna apples! Get what's coming to you, you crazy little pink apples critter! No! <laughs> oh man! Oh my god, our god, man! <laughs> what's going on? <clears throat> well, after I saw what you did to AJ, I decided it was about time she had the upper hoof. Narrator and me concocted the whole thing! The evil schemes, the apples tick, even the deranged laughter. It takes more than a few months to drive me to insanity, Pinkie Pie. I have to live with you every single day. So, I gave her story awareness to you and your fourth wall breaking abilities to Applejack. I've seen the headache you've given her in your past stories, so it was only fair. <laughs> yeah, only fair. <laughs> Oh, Applejack, I'm so sorry. I only did it because I knew you would be perfect in this role. And I should have asked you first. You know, since you're kind of aware of what's going on. Not just kinda anymore. Now that I know that there's a narrator, I have a lot more pull in these here stories. So I guess that means I can forgive you. Seeing how I can pick my own parts from now on. Besides, in your own strange way, it's kind of a compliment to my acting abilities. See? That's what I've been saying! But wait, if this was all an act, is Sky Blue in on it too? Oh no, she's really cursed. You're the one that goes on about the stories being accurate. This time I got to have some fun with that. Oh, and I saw who you casted as the prince, and I didn't agree with that, so I went ahead and recast that part. Then who's gonna wake her up? Why don't we find out? Pinky and the clones found their precious princess on the ground once again, but no matter how much they tried, they could not wake her from her deadly sleep. After some searching, Shrinky Pie discovered the curse that was used on the princess, and more importantly, the way to break it. She explained that the princess could only be awakened by someone she loved, but they had no idea who that pony could be. So, despite Winky Pie's many attempts to wake her herself, Pinky and the clones built her a gingerbread casket without a lid. They placed her in a brightly lit meadow and told all ponies far and wide the story of the sleeping princess. Many ponies attempted to wake her, but all failed. That was until one particular bright afternoon when a handsome prince happened to pass by. He had heard of the legend of the sleeping princess and decided to try to wake her himself. When he saw her, he was struck by her beauty. Never before had he seen a princess more beautiful and more perfect for him than her. A kiss on the cheek should awaken my princess! And, at long last, I will have found the perfect pony for me! The prince is Rainbow Dash too? Yep. Applejack, that's really... funny! <laughs> I never would have thought of that! It's comedy genius! I thought so. Heck, I might even be funnier than you. Apple Tails isn't sounding so bad now, is it? <laughs> no. The end. And that's the end to this here tale, youngins.
Pinky finally got what was coming to her, and we stayed true to the story to boot. Now I gotta figure out how to get her out of there. Hmm. I guess I'll be seeing y'all next time for some more Apple Tales!